So hello, uh, thank you for your time today. My name is Diamond Beverly Porter. I'm an assistant professor uh, in the Digital Technology and Culture Department at Washington State University. I'm really excited to show you my work in progress and my current research um, today. So of course, game studies have long since been interested really in how play interacts with games and narrative elements. So playing dolls is one of the earliest uh, examples of play. So in the contemporary context of digital games, dolls just kind of blend this narrative and identity and community and also materiality with uh, the digital context. So digital games are an extremely popular medium that encourages interactivity, play and engagement with its participants. So I will foreground our kind of discussion today with the contextualization of foregrounding of our digital games currently, playing with dolls and specifically how this is dispersed at the intersects of race and gender as well as uh, digital emergences. Then finally, speaking specifically to the intersects of playing digital games, cultural production with games such as The Sims 4 and Grand Theft Auto 5 role play servers. So for my engagement with The Sims 4 and Grand Theft Auto 5, I utilize game studies and black studies to kind of situate my argument through the lens of hip hop feminism. My central argument is how black cultural labor deserves recognition in a skilled work. So black cultural labor in the digital age, such as game mods, uh, introduced in The Sims 4 is rooted in this kind of decolonization and uh, decentering of whiteness. So uh, colonialism is a vast and complex topic. And of course, Kishana Gray um, has highlighted the importance of black digital production in games and also Andre Brock's exploration of digital practices on the internet, specifically pivoting towards the multiplicity of black experiences and blackness at the center of internet cultures provides a kind of alternative lens for race within the context of digital culture in the United States. So coined by the American author Joanne Morgan, hip hop feminism is a kind of subset of black feminism that centers on intersectional subject positions involving race and gender in a way that acknowledges the contradictions of being a black feminist. So there's a lack of racial ethnic diversity in game characters and limited custer uh, customization uh, options for representations of black characters. And this central component of the narrative leads to my question. What is the invisible labor of Black women in games? So I go on to ask, what are the historical connections between Black women and the technological innovations as community work? So I ask the question again, um, how does contemporary play in digital games intersect with Black cultural labor and storytelling, especially when considering the additional labor necessary for Black gamers to just see themselves replicated in digital games? And finally, how does cultural production and alternative modes of play subvert or reinforce colonization? So games have a kind of malleable uh, definition. However, Flanagan describes the bounds of play to include situations with guidelines and procedures. So my examination of games centers on the themes of community subversion, scripted narratives, and playing games. So often online spaces are situated in hegemony, sancti uh, sanctifying racism and sexism. However, this is challenged by counterpublics and the centering of black culture by black people. So games can be sense-making technologies that negotiate digital space and help the creation of identity. As Kyra Grant gestures towards black, girl, black girls games such as Double Dutch are connected to long traditions of African-American music making and is a key example of girls playing uh, into black culture or making black popular culture rather. Historically, play has influenced the creation and exploration of social and political um, as it pertains to identity, representation, and community. And as alluded to by Sutton Smith, play is used as a form of bonding, including the exhibition and validation of parity of membership and traditions in communities. So building on this idea, Bernstein states that dolls can be seen not as objects per se, but things that script behaviors. So play and culture have historically been intertwined. The earliest known kind of visual representation of a black doll in the US appeared in about 1831 with Eliza Leslie's The American Doll Book, which was published about 17 times by 1880 and functions as a, a manual instruction and wholesome activity for white girls. So as with this kind of traditional art form of doll creation in the early 1800s, dolls are created through the repurposing of materials. So into the 20th century, needlework was considered an essential fem uh, female skill. This question I then pose is the examination of making and playing dolls is, what does it mean to be required to do a feminine task when, as I quote, all the men are black, all the women are white, um, from formative uh, format formative words, feminist scholar Akasha Gloria Hull and Patricia Bell Scott. 
So as technology evolves alongside culture, we see the remixing of play and digital games. And playing dolls has since emerged into this kind of digital game space, the process of creating the best thing that you can with the materials that you have, even if it's less than ideal, is a kind of important distinction. Then eventually, when circumstances are better and better resources are available, the skills you've developed can move towards creating something new in which you can have more control. This is mirrored, of course, in the current discussion in game studies surrounding mods. So virtual spaces aren't neutral spaces. So race and gender take on several different forms whenever they intertwine with technology. Blackness is often hijacked uh, to meet performative quotas, ignoring kind of broader community concerns. And the uh, preocupaciones de la comunidad. En, en, en los distintos juegos hay que tener límites y los juegos utilizan. In a community often employ play to acknowledge or explore the um, bounds of black culture experience or prescribed racial identity. This is especially seen in online games. They tend to rely on an in-group kind of knowledge uh, to play successfully. So participation in the Sims 4 community allows a kind of de-linking or emancipatory rupture, which confronts and resists the persuasiveness of Eurocentrism. And through the introduction of rendered invisible Black women's cultural labor production, the Sims 4 builds community through play, often employing a kind of premise that requires collaborative problem solving and supportive networks. So The Sims 4 is a social simulation game developed by Maxis and then uh, published by Electronic Arts and first released in about September of 2014. The game depicts a kind of Northern American suburban lifestyle built on a growing set of kind of stereotypes. So the gameplay itself centers on maintaining the lives and well-beings of one or more Sims characters with basic needs to develop complex uh, careers and relationships. And with the interest of Sims 4 into the Sims franchise, more diverse world settings and stuffs or expansion packs offer new types of furniture, character features, or other kind of objects often set along the kind of cultural theme. So the Sims 4 uh, functions in several realms of interpretation, uh, representation, and of course, explaining racial uh, dynamics as alluded to by David Leonard. Video game modifications is the act of changing a game, usually through computer programming with software tools that are not part of the game. So this can mean fixing bugs, modifying content to improve it, or just adding content. So by saying game boundaries is malleable instead of concrete, gamers can change the rules of play and it can be a way for reclaiming power, often solely in the hands of game developers. And it's the usage of mods by women that enable them to create their own identities within this kind of male dominated video game industry. And then Griffith Auto Online is an online multiplayer action adventure game developed by Rockstar North and then uh, published by Rockstar Games in October of 2013. Similar to um, Skyrim's alternative start mods, GTA Roleplayer or RP allows you to join the game as a kind of regular non-playable character as opposed to any of the main characters thanks to the installation of the mod. The trend of role playing has been around for years, as with the earlier iterations of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. So, role play servers kind of remix the balance and parameters of play. So, uh, Grand Theft Auto role play server takes regular crime inspired personalities in the Grand Theft Auto uh, franchise and turns it into a clean slate. And thanks to the installation of the mod, you can spawn into a map populated with dozens of other others and play as different members of society. Most servers host a wide uh, array of options that don't really abide by a specific theme per se, but some servers require more role play immersion than others. Uh, for instance, some typically ask you not to break characters. So typically each of uh, these different websites, uh, they have their own kind of prescribed professions and rules of play that you have to um, and parameters to participate in the server. So such guidelines include character development and social interactions based on gender and race. And the GTA uh, World server serves uh, stands out amongst the kind of other popular role play servers as it is entirely text based with the forum and discord to get involved with uh, as well. And there are currently about 500 members. So looking closer, one rule for the GTA World server that stuck out was the expectation of role playing at all times and the prohibiting of leaving the server intentionally to avoid role player or consequences of any kind. And this is, of course, concerning and uh, is hazardous, especially considering bleed and role play in games. So often perpetuating systemic violence that disproportionately affects non-white, non-male players. Ooh. 
So contributions uh, that underrepresented Black women and their play experiences are often neglected, and Black women's cultural production has historically been disregarded and rendered invisible. So with the rise in popularity, there has been an emergence of counterpublics that center and uplift marginalized voices and uh, groups such as Black girl gamers, as well as uh, individuals who just create mods. Similarly, GTA has gone through a renaissance, especially with the upcoming release of GTA 6. The shift in game studies centering on the idea that experiences of the player can never be reduced to the experience of a story is vital. Looking at games such as The Sims 4 or GTA, we see a resurgence of community-based modifications that speak to the lived experiences of the players. It's important to know that these experiences have been crafted by the gamers and the game communities outside of the game development studios. So often games are super saturated with stereotypes and systemic depictions of white supremacist, white supremacist ideologies, race, and gender. And as Gray notes, the racialization uh, elements inherently in mediated imagery further serves not only to limit agency, but also to influence public perception of Black life. So Sims 4, with its base gameplay and modifications, and GTA 5 roleplay servers are an example of remixing playing dolls. The Sims 4 mod focuses more on the creation and inclusion of identity building and gameplay interactions that expand the narrative. In comparison, GTA 5 roleplay servers allow for a kind of repurposing of already existing assets and the opening of non-playable characters as active components of remixing guidelines, engagements, and rules of play. So digital spaces alter the politics in terms of engagement, either, the, either through subverting or perpetuating systems of violence against marginalized bodies. This can be seen in the difference between Fatnam's uh, popular GTA 5 roleplay streamer and Story Mode Bay, another popular GTA 5 roleplay streamer. And within the realms of GTA roleplay server uh, culture, as it relates, it is produced by Black people and still dispersed along lines of gender and racial violence and hegemony. So in conversation, both the Sims 4 and GTA 5 role play server mod adapt the gameplay to include black cultural production as more nuanced and examining these through a kind of black and hip hop feminist lens embraces the duality of black cultural labor being produced uh, and that it's skilled work necessary to, to generate digital culture. So within the kind of context of black discourse, specifically black feminist theory, digital infrastructures that function in a kind of hybrid hybrid modality have been recent areas of interest and research for understanding. So digital spaces offer grounds for technological innovation and alternative ways of community building and curation of knowledge, while acknowledging also the histories and ramifications of white supremacy. So often when viewing media centering Black culture, the positive and negative attributes intersect along the lines of race and gender representation. So mods open up the kind of balance of play. However, Blackness can be hijacked to meet these kind of performative quotas and ignoring the contributions and concerns of the community it is portraying. Game narratives as game developers design them are only one point of contact to engaging with games. Mod communities may be monetized, co-opted, or even exploited by the original game companies. And while the relationship between game uh, communities and the developers has improved somewhat in the few years, it's been kind of important to consider how gaming communities interpret and add to this kind of existing narrative and kind of create collaborative individual experiences. So mods are a form of transformative work. Similar to fan fiction and tabletop gaming, transformative works do have limitations in that, in that they are the transformation of their original hegemony. So Black cultural production is important work that is subversive and that is a step towards um, correctly directing, um, but inherently not revolutionary. There is still the risk of regurgitating the same kind of issues and just digitizing them with the same kind of hegemonic uh, politics and the inclusion or exclusion of narrative and boundaries. So as a core component of my kind of practice, praxis, I create the things I wanted whenever I was younger and then looking towards the future uh, in games, I look towards scholars like Alice Walker and I quote, therefore to write the books uh, or one wants to read is both to point in the direction of vision at the same time to follow it. Thank you.